everyone. In this video, we're going to discuss an example uh, of re uh, identifying the returns to scale using a production function. In particular, we're going to use a Cobb Douglas production function with two inputs. And those two inputs are Z1 and Z2. So you can think of Z1 or Z2 as maybe labor, capital, land, or other raw or intermediate goods. And the function is in this form here, Z1 raised to alpha, Z2 raised to one minus alpha, where alpha lies between zero and one. So what you can notice is that if you add uh, the exponents of Z1 and Z2, it will always equal to one, which is of course a characteristic of a Cobb-Douglas production function. So what we want to do, okay, we're gonna do this manually first, and then I'm gonna show you the solutions in Mathematica uh, to follow. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna first prove that the function displays constant returns to scale. So what it means by constant returns to scale is that if you double the amount of, say for example, double is the case, let's say we double the amount of Z1 and we double the amount of Z2, it would mean that the value of the function or the total output, since this is a production function, would also double. So since we doubled the inputs, the output will double as well. So that's in the same proportion. So we're gonna prove that this function displays that behavior. Second, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the marginal product of each input and we'll understand what that means. And then third, we're going to get the second order cross and, the, and direct partial derivatives and what are the implications and if Young's theorem is satisfied. So again, we'll solve first manually, then we'll get to Mathematica solutions. So first, okay, we need to prove that the function displays constant returns to scale. And to do that, we need to remember the idea of a homogeneous function in that if the production function, okay, if the production function uh, is homogeneous of degree h, okay, so a degree h in z1 and z2, then if all inputs are multiplied by some constant tau, okay, and we let it, oh wait, it's a positive constant, so tau is greater than zero, we have the function that if we multiply each input, so our two inputs are Z1 and Z2, we're going to multiply that with tau, each of them. Okay, we can get it in such a way that we can isolate that in this form. And whatever the exponent of tau ends up being, that's uh, the degree to which our function is homogeneous to. Okay, now that degree is crucial because that degree uh, underlies which type of returns to scale the function would have. So, if that degree h is equal to one, then the function displays constant returns to scale. That is, for example, say again, I double both the inputs, I double z1 and z2, output would also double. If the function displays decreasing returns to scale, that's h less than one, it means that if I double z1 and z2, the output would be less than a doubling. So it wouldn't double, it would be maybe times 1.5, 1.2, something like that. But if it were greater than one, it means that the function displays increasing returns to scale. That is, if I double the out, uh, if I double the inputs again, that's z1 and z2, the output would more than double, say 2.5, 3, and so on. So let's try and prove that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply okay, our function by each input in our function by tau. Okay, so that's gonna be equal to. So if you remember, our function is. Um, so we have here uh, uh, that z1 raised to alpha, z2, 1 minus alpha. Again, we're going to multiply it by tau, right? So that's tau z1 raised to alpha, tau z2 raised to 1 minus alpha. Okay, then what we're going to do now, okay, is we're going to simplify it. That's tau raised to alpha, z1 raised to alpha. Uh, times tau raised to 1 minus alpha times z2 raised to 1 minus alpha. I can simplify this further, right? Combining both taus, that's alpha, plus 1 minus alpha. So I add the exponents by rules of exponents. Times z1 raised to alpha, z2 raised to 1 minus alpha. But again, we know that uh, that is just our function, okay? So if I simplify this one, that's equal to 1. And this is f z1 z2. Note, 
we isolated this in this um, form there. It looks something like that form. Now, what is H in this case? H is 1. Okay, and again, since, okay, since H, which is the degree of homogeneity, is equal to 1, uh, then, uh, then the function displays constant returns to scale. That is, if I double the inputs, the output will also double. Okay, so that's question one answered. Second question, okay, we want to get the marginal product of each input. And that's just basically deriving the production function uh, with respect to each input. So what we're going to do is this. Okay, so we have the function. So let me just write it down again. That's z1 raised to alpha, z2, 1 minus alpha. Okay. The marginal product of Z1, that's equal to the first order partial derivative of the production function with respect to the input Z1. And that's going to be equal to alpha, Z1 raised to alpha minus 1, Z2 raised to 1 minus alpha. Okay. Then we have marginal product with respect to Z2. Okay. Again, that's the first order partial derivative of the function with respect to z2, uh, and that's going to be equal to 1 minus alpha, okay, z, uh, this will be z1, sorry, z1 raised to alpha, z2, uh, 1 minus alpha minus 1, that's negative alpha. And what you'll notice is, okay, remember z1 and z2, these are inputs, and there's no such thing as a, as a negative input, so you can't have say negative capital or negative land, right? So you should always have a positive input and it means that Z1 and Z2 are something that's positive. It could be zero, but let's say in our case, in the domain, it's greater than zero. Then if I plug in a positive value for Z1 and Z2, you'll know that this one is greater than zero and is greater than zero for all values, okay? For all values, Z1, Z2, and alpha greater than zero. So same case alpha greater than zero. So what does that mean? Okay, say, let's interpret this derivative first, this first one. It means that output will increase if I increase my input z1 holding the amount of z2 I use constant, right? Because it's a partial derivative, so you hold the other input constant. In this case, you hold z2 constant. So since the derivative is positive, it means that the value of the function, which is output, will increase if you increase z1 holding z2 constant. In this derivative, it's uh, relatively the same. If you increase z2, then the function is expected to increase, which is output holding z1 constant. And that's the marginal product of each input. Okay, next. Uh, we need to get the second order, direct and cross partial derivative. So just rewriting it, okay. Um, so um, the first order derivative with respect to z1, that's alpha raised to z1, alpha minus 1, z2, 1 minus alpha. And then the first order derivative with respect to z2, that's equal to 1 minus alpha, z1 raised to alpha, z2 raised to negative alpha. Okay, let's start first with the direct, okay, the direct cross partial derivative. So fz1, z1. This is going to be equal to, so I drop down the exponent of z1, so that's alpha times alpha minus 1. z1, alpha minus 1 minus 1, that's alpha minus 2. z2, 1 minus alpha. Okay, then I simplify a bit. This is alpha squared minus alpha. z1, alpha minus 2. z2, 1 minus alpha. Then let's get fz2, z2. This is going to be equal to, okay, exponent of z2 is negative alpha, so I get negative alpha. 1 minus alpha, z1, alpha remains the same. z2 becomes negative alpha minus 1, okay? Then simplify a bit. This is going to be equal to negative alpha plus alpha squared, z1, alpha, z2, negative alpha minus 1. And those are your two directs, okay? Then let's get the cross, okay, cross. So let's do f z1 uh, z2. So I derive this one with respect to z2. We get alpha times 1 minus alpha. Z1 alpha minus 1. Z2 negative alpha. 
And then I derive this second one with respect to Z1. Okay, and then I get uh, something equal to alpha times 1 minus alpha Z1. So that becomes alpha minus 1. Z2 negative alpha. Okay, what we notice is the first, okay, look at the cross, okay, since, okay, since FZ1, Z2 is equal to FZ2, uh, Z1, okay, uh, that implies Young's theorem, okay, Young's theorem does hold, does hold, okay, then with regards to the direct, if you notice, okay, remember that alpha, Okay, the alpha lies between 0 and 1. So if I square something that lies between 0 and 1, its value is certainly less than its original value. So it means that alpha squared is less than alpha. If you notice here, okay, alpha squared here is positive, then this is a negative quantity. So the negative value would more than offset the positive. So that's something negative. Z1 raised to alpha minus 2, that's something positive. This is also something that's positive. Therefore, this entire derivative, okay, is negative, okay? And we can see the same thing here. Again, alpha is bigger than alpha squared. Alpha squared here is positive, okay? So this is positive, this is negative. So the negative would more than offset the positive. So this is negative times a positive times a positive, meaning that derivative, okay, is also negative. And that implies that, um, that implies diminishing returns to your input so that means for example if you increase the amount of um, the amount of labor okay that will increase the value of the output or the function but the rate at which it increases is at a decreasing rate okay so that's what's implied by the first or uh, the second order direct partials then Young's theorem holds in the second order cross partials so let's uh, that's how to do it manually so let's see how to do it in Mathematica and we get this Okay, so um, first thing to do in Mathematica when you open it is you need to define the function. So the clear command is just there to make sure that we don't have um, we don't have uh, a value of f stored in memory. Okay, and we define the function. Okay, again this is our function. So we're saying that z one and z two are variables, our inputs in this case, and it's equal to z one raised to alpha times z two raised to one minus alpha. So that's the first step, we define the function. Okay, then what we do is we check if it displays constant returns to scale. And what you do that is we can define another object that's J, or it can be anything for that matter. So you can multiply each of the inputs. So what we did is we multiplied Z1 by tau and then Z2 by tau. Then we get this output here. Okay, that should be the expected output. Then what we do is we can simplify it. Okay, we can do a full simplify command. And we can get something like this. Okay. And then if we use a power expand command, okay, we can actually bring uh, tau out. Okay, and that proves that uh, we get this part here. That's our original function, z1, z2, okay, times tau which is the form of homogeneous function. And since the exponent of that homo of tau is 1, then the function displays constant returns to scale. So I just stated it in this part. Okay, Since the exponent of tau is 1, the production function exhibits constant returns to scale. Then what we do is we can obtain the first order derivatives of the function. So we use the d, uh, d command. Okay, And the initial argument is our function, that's f z1, z2 comma what we want to derive it so that's z1 and that the, this first one gives us fz1 the second one will give us fz2 and if you notice it's the same as our answers earlier okay and uh, next we can also calculate the second order cross and direct so this first two are the direct okay these are the direct and the second two are the cross okay so the argument again starts with the function and the second argument begins with what variable or what input you want to differentiate with respect to. So in this case, the first one, it's Z1. And then you want to differentiate it with respect to Z1 twice. That's why 2 is there. So that's second order derivative. And you see the same trend with Z2, okay, twice. In this one, you derive it first with respect to Z1, then with respect to Z2. In this case, with respect to Z2 first, then z1 
and we proved that Young's theorem holds in this case. So that's um, how to prove uh, constant returns to scale and deriving the second order cross and direct partials as well as the marginal product of a Cobb-Douglas production function.